Good evening again, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Debbie Tylus, and I am the Veterinary Outreach Coordinator at Walk and Pets. And tonight we are joined by Renee Mills, who is the product inventor of the um, front and rear no knuckling training socks. So Renee is going to um, share with us her insights, why she designed the product, tips and tricks on um, proprioception, how you can incorporate the no knuckle into um, your practice. And um, then we can certainly open it up to questions um, toward the end. Um, again, we will use the chat feature at the bottom um, of the screen. There's a little chat. If you guys just want to type your questions in there, um, I can go ahead and read them off to Renee um, as we go through. So Renee, thank you again for joining us and please uh, take it away. Sure. Well, hello everybody. Thanks again for joining us this evening. I'm really excited to talk to you about the no knuckling training socks. Um, the no knuckling training socks were the very first product I designed. I was actually, I'm a CCRP. I was a vet tech for 17 years, <laughs> a long time. Uh, and I actually um, came up with this while I was working in practice and patients and looking for a lightweight solution to work on and enhance my proprioception exercises and also to save my back in the underwater treadmill. I can't even tell you how, how many days I went home with a sore back trying to pattern a dachshund or something in the under, under, underwater treadmill. You know, it wasn't so bad with the big dogs, but the little dogs. Um, so I wanted something that would help other professionals too, to not break your back and have the same effect. Uh, so the no knuckling training socks were born. We started with the rear one and then we had such a demand for them that I ended up coming up with the front one. So now we have them for both. And so what I've done is I've put together a little presentation for you guys for this evening. I'm going to go through the basics of what it is give you some starter ideas of exercises and how to use it. And then we will open up, like I said, for the chat. I can't see it when I'm presenting, but don't, if you've come up with something while I have the slideshow going, go ahead and type it in the chat and we'll get to it. And at the very end, I will open up for any patient specific questions you have and how to use it uh, within practice. So let's go ahead and I will share my screen and we will get going. Okay, so this webinar, lovely name that Debbie came up with is this webinar won't be a drag. <laughs> so become a proprioception pro and hopefully after this, that's what the point of it is that you guys are comfortable using the notifying training socks and able to enhance your proprioception exercises in clinic. So what is the no knuckling training sock? Well, I wrote down some really important points to share. So it is a temporary training tool. I want you to think of it almost as an exercise tool, another exercise that you can use uh, to help your patients improve their CP deficits, those proprioception issues um, in a further way that can be extended at home safely as well. So it corrects, uh, helps to correct gait, improve hind paw or front paw placement, and it provides training support for dogs who drag their rear paws. So one key part about the no knuckling training sock that was important to me in design is that it provides joint support above and below the joint. Uh, so make sure that after all those dragging um, or scraping or, you know, of the, of the limb that we are not setting those pups up for extra injuries, uh, supporting the joint above and below is key. So how does it work? Well, it stimulates the dog between its toes, which causes or invokes um, them to pick the foot up higher by inducing that withdrawal reflex. So we know a lot of patients when they have CP deficits, they'll have a decreased withdrawal strength. And this will actually help in improve with that as well, because not only when they pick the leg up higher, uh, when they're stimulated with a no knuckling training sock on, does it work on proprioception, but it also works as a strengthening tool. The higher we ask them to march, the more they're engaging those muscles. Uh, so it's kind of a win-win on both sides. We know most of the time hind limb weakness or, or forelimb weakness comes with the condition that's causing the knuckling. So again, it's designed to enhance proprioception and strengthening. <laughs> um, it's perfect for rehabilitation use for pets recovering from spinal surgeries a lot, you know, especially neuro cases. Uh, this product can be key in helping to add to uh, the, the recovery and improvement level and, and how that kind of progresses along. It's lightweight. It's made of a comfortable neoprene. It's adjustable. Uh, it has touch fastener closures. So on the front knuckling training sock, there are two and on the rear, there are three in the larger sizes and two in the smaller sizes. 
The training sock is best used on pets, and this is super key for two to five minute walks and then remove it in between. So I want you to think of this as an exercise that you would do. Um, when I prescribe rehab exercises, I always kind of do what I call interval training. So meaning that I'm working shorter, more frequent reps. So I may, so, you know, I may do an exercise for 30 seconds rest for a minute, you know, that kind of ratio or depending on where your patient is, I want you to think of the training sock in the same way. It ideally works best at the beginning of walks. If you're using it for that, leave it on for two to five minutes and then continue your walk without it. And there's an easy way to do that just by um, removing the loop from underneath the toes is the front one and then kind of pulling it up and you can leave the whole base on to continue your walk and then take it off when you're done. So two to five minutes is all you really need for it to work, but frequent throughout the day or throughout your um, rehab session, if you're using it in clinic, the idea is, is that we're setting the tone for the dog. And as they progress and improve that it'll be, when you take it off, they're lifting higher and higher and the less use, the less reps it will have to be. But the time frame is important, especially if you are prescribing it to clients at home that they need to know it you don't have to wear it for more than that for it to um to work as a professional if you decide to come out of those boundaries that's completely up to you uh, just remember it is a sensitive area between the skin there and we want short uh frequent use to avoid um any sores or any spot in that on that skin webbing so it may be used in the underwater treadmill. That was part of the reason it was designed with neoprene. It dries out really quickly for air dry. I used to keep an entire set in my uh, water room and then I'd have some in the land as well and I could use those for patients. Uh, and then it's easier for owners to use at home. Um, you know, with the, I, I tried to make it as simple as I could. If you're prescribing it at home and your owners are having trouble, just have them bring it in, go over it with them, those kinds of things. But it is safe for the owners to use at home with that reiteration that, two to five minutes at a time, that's it. <laughs> but at the beginning of every walk, you know, more frequent use throughout the day. So these are some conditions that may benefit from the no knuckling training sock. So a lot of these are gonna be neurological conditions, um, uh, cervical vertebral instability, cervical disc disease, uh, some brachial plexus injuries. You know, it, that's kind of a case by case basis because a lot of times you're contracted up into flexion. So you could use it in that case, we'll get into and and on the non-affected leg to try to encourage weight bearing once they hit past a certain point. Uh, Wobbler syndrome, um, which again is kind of CVI, IVDD, DM, early stages. Uh, once we have progression from the hind limb to the forelimbs in uh, moderate to late stage DM, it will not be as effective as we all know, unfortunately, with that disease. Um, you know, there's not a lot we can do towards those stages except keep them comfortable and as active as we can based on their condition. FCE, um, and any neurological disorders causing knuckling of, of rear paw or front paw. So I realized that I just had some repeats in there, but you guys, um, you guys know what it is, <laughs> mostly neurological. I wanna to touch base here. There is another way to use the no knuckling with orthopedic post-op cases. If you have a patient that is really um, giving you a hard time about encouraging weight bearing, if you're working on three-legged stands, weight shifting, or just really working on getting weight on that affected limb, you can use the no knuckling training sock on the unaffected limb on that side. And as they pick that one up, because you put it on, we'll kind of counterbalance and start to put more weight and encourage weight bearing on the affected limb in a sneaky way. It's a sneaky little trick. <laughs> if you have a patient that um, you're really struggling with weight bearing with, or just want to enhance it and kind of move that progress along a little faster, you can do that as well. Hey, Renee, we do have a, a quick question. Can you sure. talk about, um, someone wants to know how easy they are to clean? Oh, yeah. So, Basically, they're spot clean. They dry really easy. Um, you know, you can kind of warm um, warm water, mild dish deter detergent, stuff like that. Spot clean it, let it air dry. It dries literally within 30 minutes of just laying it flat. Um, that was one of the, the keys that I love for the, the water room. So I did have a set in there. Um, I would spot clean between patients, let it dry, you know, for 20 minutes or whatever. By the time I was done with my next appointment, the one that I used before was ready to go for the next one. If that kind of makes sense. Great question. Um, okay, so this is an up close and personal of the front no knuckling training sock. Uh, there are some key design differences in the front and the rear with the front, uh, the cord portion that needs to go underneath of the center two toes. 
is shorter just because atomically they're different <laughs> you don't you don't need as much cord to reach up the center of the joint the white tag that is on both the rear and the front are strategically placed to help you identify how to center over for so for this one the carpal joint to kind of give you that idea uh, and it does allow full movement and flexion as they pick it up with the key of it um, the back of the you guys can kind of see this no it's kind of dark <laughs> the back of it there is an opening right here um, for the back of the joint so it does allow full flexion when they're moving for the front uh, there is a uh, soft fleece pad underneath which is removable i recommend that you always use it um, just to give that extra little cushion between the cord and that sensitive skin area um, when they are walking with it so this is the rear no knuckling training sock and i get a lot of questions on this one on fitting I designed it to allow the hock exposed, as you can see with this picture, that the hock joint itself is exposed in the back. So again, it allows for flexion. And then the straps are a little long. I get that question a lot too. I purposely designed them a little bit longer. So when it is tightened down and compressed, that we're providing support above and below the joint by securing that tight fit. Um, so that is why the, stra the straps are longer on the rear than they are on the front, um, just in case you guys are wondering if you've used it before. And again, the white little tag helps you to center um, in front of the joint so you know where you're going. But that's up close to that. It does have the fleece for in between the toes as well. All right, so I wanna show you guys a few videos of in-hospital use. Um, so this, one's going to get us started and they're using a front and a rear at the same time <laughs> so you can use multiple no knuckling training socks at the same time i always recommend that you start with the most affected leg that you really want to focus on and then add in let's see if i can play it again for you guys add in the second one as they get used to it. If you put both on the front at the same time, you know, they, they're gonna take a little bit longer to figure it out. But if you use one for days or a week or however long they begin to get comfortable with it and then add the second one in, you're gonna be able to progress a little bit um, sooner and they'll be accustomed to how it feels. Okay, let me see if I can. All right, so here's one in the underwater treadmill. They are using two uh, front ones for this. Again, this is kind of what I was talking about. And part of the reason is not having to bend down and stick your fingers in between those toes and get to patterning. It makes your life a little bit easier on these guys. And with that, I'll play it again. Without these on, um, I believe this pup did not have a whole lot of movement at all. <laughs> so working this and progressing as part of your treatment plan will definitely help to aid in speeding up their recovery and response. So that's pretty cool. I like how they have a donut um, to help support the head as well. I think that's a neat idea. All right, and here is another one. Underwater treadmill. Again, it was designed in mind for animals that are weak and it's super lightweight and that was key to me and that was the main reason that I designed it. Again, you'll see they're, they're using two at the same time and picking those feet up. I'm gonna play it one more time for you guys. And you'll know whether they're marching or not by how by playing with the cord. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a minute as well. And how do you know how tight to to fit it and what the response should be? I do have a, a question, Renee, yeah. if, if you want to take it. Um, does the upper closure on the rear sock mm -hmm. affect the um, and I'm going to I'm going to butcher this name. Um, the calcany tendon, the calcany tendon. There, there you go. Um, <laughs> the DDF, SDF at all. I have not come into any of the cases that I have used it on that that hinder the calcany tendon. Um, I know that is a pressure point, and when you're tightening it down, just like you would any other support brace uh, for the tarsal joint itself, you want to make sure that it's not too tight. So if you really tighten it and compress it down to the point where you're going to have swelling above or below, yes, I think that it would, you know, put some pressure on the calcaneum tendon. If you're fitting it correctly, there shouldn't be any fear interference or extra pressure placed on that. That's a good question. And you didn't butcher it. <laughs> All right. Um, how to utilize the knuckling training socks with patients during treatment. So I'm going to give you guys 
Um, actually, let's talk about how do you know if it's working or not. So when you put the no knuckling training socks on, you're going to have the option to tighten the cord, right? It goes under the toes. This will be the last thing you do. You tighten the cord up so it's going to be taut. It's kind of hard to see here. <laughs> so the cord is taut. And then you let them walk a little bit. If it is not a noticeable pickup of the foot, go back, tighten it a little bit more, have them walk again. It sh should be a very pronounced pickup that they're of the foot, the difference when the, the cord is tight and the knuckling training sock is on. Again, this will depend on how severe the CP deficits are too. Um, if you have a pet that has maybe after a laminectomy or something has, you know, loss of deep pain, I've actually used these techniques to create a spinal walker, so to speak. Um, so the tightness will depend on how severely their proprioception is affected. But that's the key way to check whether the, the, the tight, um, the no knuckling training sock is on tight enough for your walk or for your exercise that you're doing. And again, just have them walk around. If it's a pronounced pickup from before when they had it on, then that's great. Uh, if not, go back, tighten it a little bit more. You don't want to tighten it to the point where their toes are up like this, right? We don't wanna, we don't wanna hyperextend their toes in the wrong direction. That obviously would be too tight. We still wanna keep that natural stance of paw placement and joint with it. And that's why just by tightening the cord that should be able to give you the reaction that you're looking for, but it's gonna differ for every patient. So I just wanna make sure that's clear. All right, so let me give you a few exercises to get you started. Um, that are some of the ones that are the most common that I have used this for. So no knuckling training sock walks. So this is one that can easily be prescribed for owners at home. It's probably the only one I would prescribe for owners at home um, just because it's very effective by just taking them on a short walk. Uh, so you're gonna have them or you uh, apply the sock to the affected limb, keep it on for two to five minutes at the beginning of the walk to set the tone right? If the deficits are bilateral, you know, we talked about that a few minutes ago, start with the most affected one first, give that some time for them to get used to it, whether it's days, whether it's a week, whether it's two weeks, whatever it is, and then add the second one in. The acclimation to the addition of the second one will be faster, but you want to make sure that you start to improve and they get used to moving um, with it on at one at first. We all know that there's some, there's some um, dogs that you put it on and they're like, oh, you broke my leg. I'm not going to walk at all. So, you know, just take uh, with your discretion for your patient, their response to one, and then add in the second one when you feel that they're, they're ready for it. But this is a good one. I, you know, every walk at home, two to five minutes at the beginning, and then take it off. And the improvement that you can tell your, your pet owners that they're looking for is when they don't have the sock on or they don't have the cord tightened and they're, you know, finishing out the rest of their 10 minute, 15 minute walk, whatever it may be, that they continue to see the dog picking the leg up. You know, they're, they're starting to see, okay, you know what, I hear less scraping or, you know, we, we stopped and the foot wasn't knuckled under the placement was correct. It's those small things that will add up. Um, I have had response times immediately. I've had response times in a week or two. I've had response times in a few days where, okay, hey, we don't need any more, but we're going to keep this in our back pocket because we're already, already walking. I recommend regardless of what you're seeing and the improvement that you commit to using it for at least a, a two to four week mark just to continue to improve not only the proprioception but the strength as well because we know there's going to be weakness associated with the affected limb um, in clinic uh, enhanced cavaletti poles so cavaletti poles is a big one for using for proprioception and this one can basically enhance if they're really struggling even on a cavaletti pole that is low to the ground, you can apply the no knuckling training sock to the affected limb. And then as they go over it, they'll be more inclined to pick it up and work and step over that. So it can give them a little bit more of that uh, benefit of the exercise if they're struggling with the poles by themselves. And you can continue to use it as you advance your cavaletti pole heights as well for the best outcome and really kind of lifting over that. Hey, Renee, we got a couple questions if you want to take sure, them. Sure, yeah, I can take them. Um, so these are from Jane. Um, okay. She said she noticed in the video at the end, the cord seems to flap around a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Does that tend to bother the dog? Okay. Uh, no, I haven't had that. Depending on, and that was because that one was tightened down quite a bit. So if you're tightening this down quite a bit to get a response, you may have a flap in the front. But if you're in the on treadmill or walking, you know, it's not like they're um, a horse prancing like this. You're not going to get a whole lot of jiggle with movement uh, when they're walking, but you may have a little bit. 
I haven't had one person say that affected and I haven't personally seen it affect the dog. And then this is also from Jane. Okay. She said, with dogs with DM, is there a plan to encourage muscle tone in the early stages? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. My So this is my personal two cents on DM cases uh, that I've worked on. And my consensus is, is the more activity that you can give them early on, the better off they're going to be. Um, you know, you're, you're basically trying to prolong um, the progression as long as you can by keeping them as strong as you can. So in DM cases, you know, it's, it's a big, it's a, it's a big, oh gosh, what's the word I'm going to say? Collaboration of different exercises from proprioception to strengthening, especially. I love to swim those guys. Any DM case I had, I saw a minimum of three times a week. And that was the commitment, <laughs> um, which I swam them. We did proprioception. I used the no knuckling training socks because not only proprioception, but strengthening, um, so yes, early stage, you know, maybe even moving into moderate when you start to see the progression into the front, um, you know, you, you may not be as successful. I'm not saying that you can't still continue to work at it. I believe you should, um, until, you know, that time comes, but good question. Yes. DM be as aggressive as you can with as many exercises, walks, strengthening combinations. And the cool thing with that, I said, I know I've already stated, but the no knuckling training sock encourages them to lift the leg higher. So we're in doing that, that we're working those muscles and joint range of motion a little bit better. It's kind of a, a two, three in one combo exercise. Great question. Is that it, Deb? That's all <laughs> I got for right now. All right, good. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Great questions as always. So, um, okay. Enhanced figure eights or cone weaving. So any exercise that you are working on strengthening and proprioception. Again, this all ties into the fact that especially if this is a neurological condition and a patient that you're using this for, we know we're gonna have weakness. So you may not only be working on weight bearing encouragement to the affected leg, but um, balance strengthening. And you know, you may not be able to start out on you know, uh, balance discs or you know, balance boards or any of those things. So you start basics, enhanced figure eights, meaning that walking in a figure eight pattern with a no knuckling training sock on, right? And knowing that we can put the affected leg to the inside of every turn to get them to utilize it more. Uh, cone weaving is one of my favorite, favorite exercises um, just to work on balance, strength, coordination, and using the no knuckling training sock in correlation with that is fantastic. Uh, it's very simple. I love simple exercises that I can build on and uh, increase the difficulty or increase the reps, those kinds of things. That's just my personal preference to each their own. Um, but cone weaving is a really good one just to work on proprioception as well. Uh, treadmill patterning. So this can be dry land treadmill. This can be water treadmill. Um, anytime that you are working on patterning and uh, foot placement for them until they start to get the strength and, and figure out those connections are rewiring and, and, and you know getting back to where they should be. So you can apply the sock to those affected limbs. It will greatly save your back, number one, but it'll also enhance the workout that they get. So if we can combo um, you know, an assistive device like the no knuckling training sock with one of our other exercises, to enhance the workout that we're getting and the time frame that we have, maybe before the patient fatigues as well, that's a win-win in my book. So those are some basic ones to get you started. Um, there's a zillion things that we could add this into. Uh, again, you know, like I said, if you have an orthopedic case that maybe it's a post-op TPLO, TTA, FHO, any of those guys where you're struggling to really work on getting the patient to respond to weight-bearing exercises, um, you know, maybe you're doing three-legged stands or you're, you know, walking um, and, and trying to encourage weight bearing, you know, or maybe you're doing elevated weight shifting, anything that you're trying to encourage that weight bearing on the infected limb, the no knuckling training sack I have found can be used on the unaffected limb to encourage them to lift that up during the walk and plop the weight on over. It's very sneaky. <laughs> um, I had to use this a lot of times in little dog FHOs that would rather walk on two legs instead of three or four. They're perfectly fine with that. Um, and so, you know, thinking outside the box and how to use that, um, I challenge you to be open-minded if you have a really stubborn case that's uh, post-op ortho to grab the knuckling training sock to work on that weight-bearing encouragement. 
Okay, so that was a lot. <laughs> um, so now is the time where we can open up for more questions um, or patient specific protocols. If you guys have a case that you are thinking that this may work for and wanna talk it through with me, I'm happy to do so at this time. Or anything that maybe I missed, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. So, Renee, Renee yes. If you're gonna work, so I have a, I do have a patient in mind. Okay. Um, if you're going to try one on a rear end of a dog with DM, mm -hmm. would you try the worst limb or the better limb? I would try would, the most, yeah, the most affected leg first. That's what I was just going to say. I would think the worst limb because I'm not trying to make anything perfect. Right. I'm just trying to give this dog some encouragement to not end up mm -hmm. flat if yeah. I, as long as I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that was and my that's, thought. Yeah, and that's 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 right on. It's key with DM, in my personal opinion, that you do as much as you can as early on as you can, and this gives the owners something that they can use at home too for walks. You know, it, it is heartbreaking for us and the owners with DM, and you get all those bloody toenails, and then you have that battle and and those kinds of things. You you also have the owner is a physician, which is always a problem for me because ironically, he doesn't really. Everything I suggest is like, eh, it's always too much work. <laughs> put put a bunch of rugs down. Eh, I don't want to put them on my tile floor. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. It's like eh, to everything is a reason. So, you know, maybe if I offer him this versus a wheelchair, maybe he'd go eh, to the wheelchair and take a, you know, you, uh, clearly I'm exaggerating. Right. But I'm just trying to think around the, yeah. my own primary care doctor. That's what I'm <laughs> trying to think around. So, okay. Yeah. I have a plan. I formulated yeah, yeah. a plan while you were speaking. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I think, and that kind of actually brings up a really good point, Jane, is that the no knuckling training socks can be used with the walk and wheels wheelchair. So if you have a DM oh, case, interesting. See? Yeah. So if, I'm yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just, you just spawned that thought of something that I didn't, that didn't include in there. Um, I'm sure Debbie would have caught me at the end. I'm always like, okay, Debbie, what did I miss? You know? <laughs> um, but it can be used in correlation with the wheelchair. So if you have a case that's just really too weak to stand, yeah. okay, and we're in, you're building on that and they're in the rear or they're in the, the um, rear with the front attachment, whatever right. it is, you can use the no knuckling training socks with it and just make sure, you know, how you're setting your harnesses in the wheelchair, whether it's mm -hmm. if they're in a rear chair, that they're actually weight bearing, you know? So when they're doing this and they have the opportunity to weight bear right. with the no knuckling training socks on and still get that pickup and that movement, the time frame stays the same. That two to five minutes that doesn't, mm -hmm. that doesn't change. Um, if you have a DM case and you are personally supervising yeah. it in hospital doing the exercise, you can extend that. The concern is may, if we wear this for too long, that we're going to cause a little bit of rubbing and sore under there. It's a sensitive spot. So it's up to your discretion as a professional, if you okay. extend that time in hospital, but I wouldn't recommend doing it to any owner, regardless of how compliant they are. Okay. No, that's a brilliant idea. Actually, that's a brilliant idea <laughs> because um, I had my own dog in a wheelchair, which is how I knew about you guys. And that would have been in the earlier stages before she couldn't use her rear end. A absolutely brilliant idea because I was always either elevating them or wrapping them or trying to get her to move them. Right. Um, that's, that's good. Well, good. Well, good. See? Yeah. Anything that Great I'm, a big yeah, yeah. I'm a big advocate, especially with DM, the more okay. movement that we can promote for strengthening and everything as long as we can, the better off right. we're going to be. That's like our only defense, really. You know? <laughs> I, in, in my opinion, you know, when it comes to the rehab aspect of stuff. Don't. Right. I don't even know if we have a defense in all honesty. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we prolong and what we don't, but at least we don't just sit there and watch it. Yep. That's yep. how I feel about it. Yep. Great, least, great question. We give it the good, you know, the, the good try. So. Yep. Well, hopefully yeah. that works out for you. Let us know. I, I will. I'm going to bring it to my, my next office call with him as okay. opposed to the other way around. Right. And just give it to him and see what he how he wiggles his way out of this one if he can. We'll see. <laughs> I will report back. <laughs> the psychology of one's patients. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
So I have a couple things, Renee. Um, sure. One is I wanted to let everyone know that the front and the rear, um, the sizing that is available is extra small all the way to extra large. And we recently did add um, the extra large to the rear. When we first did the rear, um, it only was available up to large, um, but we saw the need um, and added the extra large size. So. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know sizing options. Great. And um, we do have a few questions. Sure. Is it best to put the sock on the dog while they're standing, lying, or sitting? And as the toes need to be flexed or in an appropriate angle? Okay, great question. So for me, it's you can put it on. I, ideally, if they're strong enough, put it on when they're standing. Okay. If they that doesn't happen, you can put it on when they're lying down. That's fine but I suggest that you tighten it when they're in a standing position and the, the toes should not be, you know, flexed. It should be, we want to keep that natural stance, right? So we don't want them to come up. We want to encourage proper placement. All we're doing with the cord underneath there and the sock is that we're supporting the joint and we're stimulating them to pick it up. Like if they had no disease process going on. So we want to keep as much of a natural stance as we can, but that's a great question. A lot of these dogs are, are you know, are too weak to stand for too long. You can use an inoculant training socks with a sling if they need assisted walking. You know, those are all the things that you can kind of combo it with. Um, it can be used on its own, but the, the glory of it is that you can put it in with other things, even of the weakest of dogs. And it is so lightweight. It is so, so lightweight. And that's why I created it. Um, there are, you know, other products on the market that have been around for a while that I, I love to death and they have their place, but they were, they were just too heavy for my weak patients. And I was just causing more problem and getting set back. And so that's why I designed the knuckling training socks. So that's a great question. Um, and we have Rachel, who is on from Australia. And we have a few folks on from Australia tonight. <laughs> um, I think it's probably morning time there. Um, but um, Rachel's been using these in her rehab for the past few months. She said it's an absolutely brilliant product, um, aiding in their walk for senior dogs with a low lift step um, paralysis case and one hind limb um, and a 14 week old puppy. The only problem oh. was the owner had to purchase two because the puppy ate the first one. <laughs> um, she said, thank you. She, I, she thinks it's a fantastic pro uh, product and she highly recommends. She said, oh, thank you. You're going to make me tear up. <laughs> she, um, she did say that she feels that the cushioning between um, the, on the larger sizes sometimes seems to be a little bit bulkier than the smaller size. Um, but other than that, she highly recommends this product. Oh, well, thank you, Rachel. Thank you for joining from Australia. I know Jillian's from Australia too, and this is in the middle of the night. I really appreciate hearing that. You know, I designed this product as my very first one, and I actually figured out that I was pretty good at designing products assistive devices for pets after I did this one and taking my um, my rehab knowledge and vet tech knowledge and I actually kind of found a new calling so but this is the, the first one and again I designed it for you guys I designed it for professionals and I designed it for the animals to um, improve their recovery so when I hear these things of how it's working I like I said I start to tear up <laughs> it's I, I'm really really happy um, that you're able to, to utilize it and uh, you know that it's helping your your patients as well. Oh, it's morning. It so is morning I, in Australia. It is morning. I think Hi. last time it was the middle of the night, wasn't it? <laughs> I figured you were napping when we couldn't see you. Okay. It is the morning. So I um, just want to add in a couple quick things that I get um, either from customers um, in our office through our customer service department um, or folks that contact me um, in regards to certain questions. Um, so one of the questions we always get is, can it be left on for the entire walk if you remove the cord um, from between the toes? Yes, and that's actually something that's kind of come about as it's been used more widely. Um, and that's kind of great that these tips grow in a product. Uh, so I, you can leave it on. And actually I suggest that's the easiest way to do it. So basically, you know, this is the front one I have here. When you are wearing it on and you hit that two to five minute mark, you literally can take this out from underneath the toes, pull it up tighter so it's not dragging and continue the walk. So you don't have to stop mid walk and take the whole contraption off. Um, and that was something that a customer actually brought to our attention or asked about. And I was like, well, hey, 
that's yes, that's that's great. <laughs> let's start. Let's start. You know, sharing that information. So that's a great question, Debbie, and it's a it's a good point. I'm glad that you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know, I just feel like it's it's certain things that I get asked often. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and the other one is, you know, can they be? And I and you did touch upon this. Um, can you know they use two on you know the rear at the same time? Um, you know, it's it's kind of how people um, people think they might be causing overstimulation. So um, if you and I think you did talk about that um, earlier. So that's usually another question that that we get often. Yeah, yeah, you can and you can certainly use. Um, and, and like in the video that we saw in that rehab clinic, you know, there was one on a front leg and there's one on the opposite rear leg. You can certainly do that. I, I again suggest you start with the most affected leg, the one that is having the most problem that has the mo most decreased, um, you know, withdrawal that has, you know, the, the worst CP response and start there and, you know, get that going. And then once they start to get acclimated, and, I, and when I say acclimated is that they're able to take a walk without like, Hey, you broke my leg, you know, like refusing to move and those kinds of things. And you figure out that proper tightness and how to get them in normal gait, you know, whenever that happens, then you can add in the second one, you know, and you're going to be looking for the same thing when you're adding in, you have the first one set, you're comfortable with what you're, you know, how taut the cord should be. And you're adding in the second one, you, you start over, you go, okay, let me, let me watch them walk. And if, if you're trying to figure that out, you could even, you know, when you're adding the second one in, Take a, take a minute and do that one by itself to figure out, okay, how much do I need to get that response, right? Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're kind of isolating each one if you're using more than one to figure out the response to each and then put them together. Um, I think it's gonna be, have the best the best outcome to it. Those are good questions because yes, they, they, can, be, they can be used multiples. And in the treadmills we saw, we had two on the front, we had two on the rear, you know, and then practice we had one on the rear and one in the front, so. Okay. Perfect. There is no other questions in the chat. Oh, so does right. anybody else have any I other have questions? I have one. Having never, having never seen these before, mm -hmm. as you know, dogs are not what I usually, anyway, having never seen them, um, how do I start guessing as to size? Like so, this box or I want to get one for Yep. So there are um, the sizing guides. Uh, there's a measurement and actually um, Debbie can, you know, when she connects with you guys, she can send you the information. It's directly okay. on the Walk and Pets website too. It's a measurement from the top okay. of the, the paw to the center of the joint in the front. And that's basically looking at the cord length that you need um, based on each size. So if you have a boxer, uh, you're probably going to be yeah. in a large 60 to 80 pounds. You know, we give a weight range too. Um, so you're probably exactly. going to be up in there. Yep. That was kind of what I was guessing, but I just figured I'd ask. Yeah, that's all in there. I thought you were going to ask me, can you use it on a fox or a wolf? <laughs> well, I was, but then, <laughs> then we'd have to start that again. Then I started thinking about, can you can you use it on a bobcat? That's where my brain was going. Or well, I, That's exactly what I went to. I but, knew, I know. did. <laughs> I thought I, I was just waiting for going, it. No, I, I'm going to start with this and move my way out there. There you go. There you go. Because you realize <laughs> that somebody has to put this on and it, it's less appropriate for a wild animal because you have to put it, you have to keep putting it on and off. Yes. yes. These are not, you know, you catch them. They're really <laughs> cute when they're little, not yeah. so cute when they're big. And if you really want to try to put this on one of them, as I say, mazel tov, have a good time. Not easy. I think it's better, it's better to start with dogs. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll leave these but I thought off. About you. It. <laughs> leave the I thought life. about this. We had a coyote that was, that was hit that I never thought was ever going to be released because it was so um, acclimated to humans. And we only had one and it was a problem. And that you could do it. Right. You know, a certain ones you could, but then we eventually found two more puppies and that wild that baby up yeah the, the most extreme i've worked on is i've done hedgehogs so i uh did rehab on hedgehogs i was the only one wait, that i knew of in the, in the country you have, you have the miniature non-knuckling yep. sock well i didn't use the no knuckling but i did the same concepts and i actually used you guys know the the pods that they have yeah. i i flipped them over and those became my balance discs 
Uh, I use a little pod and a little traction boards. I was actually asked to speak at a hedgehog convention oh, on strengthening and stuff. It. So mm -hmm. I've done hedgehogs and I've done some laser on some birds and then rabbits. Um, I have before walk and pets made a, a small, small cart. Uh, my husband and I made a wheelchair for one of my long-term rabbit patients. And it was the oh, only rabbit right. that I ever put in the underwater treadmill. Um, oh, I was able to do treadmill sessions with that bunny. His name was Topper and I still talk to his owner to this day. Um, so <laughs> it's that, that's as far as my, out of my it. range though. <laughs> Rabbits make perfect sense. I have this vision of armadillos. Now I've got armadillos in little tiny. Okay, we need to stop. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Janae, I actually, I do have a question um, okay. from Lisa. She said, do you ever use it for longer than three to five minutes if they're still dra dragging their paw and are not irritated by it? Yes, but I highly recommend that you as a professional are the only ones that do it. If you give a wider spectrum to clients based on, you know, there, there, there's going to be the client or the customer that just doesn't read the directions or doesn't listen and wears it. I, I saw one, it, it, it broke my heart. I literally did cry on that one. It was Amazon review and someone, some lady said, I left it on my dog, you know, for several hours and then I had to take it to the vet and I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> You know, if you leave it on for five, six hours, you're, you're going you're gonna to create a sore. Um, it's designed as an exercise tool. So if you want to come out of those two to five minute guidelines for yourself in practice, have at it. You know, that's, that's what you're looking for to make sure we're not causing rubbing. If you're doing a 20 minute tread, underwater treadmill session, use it for the 20 minutes. That's fine. It's the at home portion that I worry about that uh, an owner is not listening or adhering to those guidelines where we run into trouble. I trust you guys. I, I trust your professional uh, expertise in being able to make that decision for your patient. Do you mind if I add to that? Yeah. Um, so I have a client. So I, I was using these as, you know, the I, I believe the first product like this was the Dorsiflex Assist. Mm -hmm. from Paul, and they were super heavy, yeah. you know, for these guys, right? So I was using this product, you know, when it first came out as like a, a dorsiflex assist, not even no, realizing, you know, that it would be a, a training tool to improve, you know, the the gait overall with without them. And I, I did have a client who whose dog got sores. Um, she was using it for the whole walk, and I would say it was. You know, not hours, but maybe 10, 15 to 20 minutes, but, you know, every walk and he got sores, but um, I did, you know, realize that it, it helped him because when he couldn't wear them for a few weeks while he was healing, he didn't need them anymore, yeah. you know? So I was like, what? Oh, cool. <laughs> oh yeah, that does make sense. But she, she was like, you know what? He hasn't been wearing them and he's, he doesn't need them. And I was like, okay, there you go. Kate, that's because his paws were so sore. Yeah, right. In between, he was like a sore, like soaring a horse. They're all up here. Yeah. Well, that, and was true. that is the thing. And, and I have heard, like I said, in a matter of a week or two weeks after using it, that there's improvement. And mm -hmm. I, the idea is, is that we get to the improvement portion where their gait becomes closer and closer to normal, if not more improved. They're lifting higher. Their, their range of motion is better when they're going through gait. And when you get to that point, then you know you, you stick it in your back pocket and hold on to it if you need it again. Um, and so the the response time can be very very quick. And you know when you put it on to a matter of days when it's not on is what you're looking for. When they're not wearing it, how is their gait going? And so tracking that will really kind of help you to gauge the improvement. So that's great. And that is one of my biggest concerns. Uh, you know with this product, my really only concern is that if someone uses it for too long, the sores that are there. So that's why. Um, you know, I, I did a customer training on Amazon recently too. And I'm like, you know, look, this is, this is an exercise tool. You know, this is a training tool. It's, you know, um, it's not meant to be something that's worn all the time. I have used the Dorsey Assist by Therapa. I love all of their products. <laughs> um, I love Eladia. She's, she's great. She's a genius. Um, and what I ran into specifically was the, 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 how heavy it was. Um, and so that's why I was, you know, in hospital trying to make these exercises better and send something home. And, you know, the, I would just get the leg. It was just dragging because of the weakness until the strength got up there. I couldn't, I, 
I couldn't do anything with it. And so that's why the no knuckling training sock was born. It had to be lightweight um, and be able to help save my back and others' backs for patterning. <laughs> I was tired of going home, you know, hitting my back with a laser and go home before the day ended because, you know, I, I'd be bent over for 30 minutes doing a patterning. And then I felt like you know, I couldn't get up. <laughs> I was like, there's got to be a better way. There's got, there's got to be a better way. So thank you for sharing that, Kate. I would just want to mention one more thing about the sizing. Mm -hmm. um, someone had a question about sizing, but I had just the large for the longest time and th they're pretty adjustable. So like I was able to use that for most of my patients, of course, not, you know, the little dachshunds and such, but mm -hmm. you know, like 30 to 90 pounds, I feel like I was able to use the large and just like really tighten it, you know, just in clinic, yeah. you know, but they're pretty adjustable. Yeah. So I could and that's, and that's a good point because they do strap on the front of the leg. You know, ideally the hock is supposed to be exposed, um, um, you know, to support the joint or whatever. But if you're using it during exercise in the hospital, as long as it's strapped onto the front and, you know, you're having it underneath, it's going to do what it needs to do. So that's, that's a good point that, you know, there will be some um, variety of, of sizes that you can use it from maybe outside of those parameters. Thank you for sharing. Gillian <laughs> wants to know if we have a handy hints sheet that we could give to general clients. Um, and I'm not sure, Gillian, um, if you are referring to like letting them know that it's only two to five minutes, there is um, a little tag that comes in the no knuckle training sock itself um, that does state that this is a training tool and should be only um, used for two to five minutes. Um, I, I'm not sure of the exact proper language, um, but I know that that is something similar to that. Um, I do have a um, sales sheet and a case study that we can also share um, with you as well. It may be, can I just chime in there? It may be helpful too on the Walk-In Pets website the frequently asked questions section is a good reference because it breaks down to all the things and how long can they wear it? When should I take it off? Those kinds of things. So that may be a good reference for um, your clients as well. Yes. Well, guys, this has been fun. Does anyone have any other any questions, stories, anything to share yeah, and add I'm, on? I'm <laughs> just wanna, I don't know if you, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can. I wasn't sure if my microphone was going. Uh, and just for Jane, um, I find that if you change the language from wheelchair to mobility cart, they tend to be a little bit more um, receptive. Um, oh. Wheelchair has a negative connotation of being a last resort, but if you can get them to think of it as a mobility cart to help them um, get mobile, they tend to think differently of it. Oh, you are absolutely right. I was teasing because this owner is so resistant to anything. Oh, you say, it, yeah. please put a runner down on the rug on your yeah. hardwood floors. And he goes, I don't want a rug on my hardwood floors. So I was mm -hmm. like, if I go wheelchair, wheelchair, <laughs> maybe he'd put on this. Maybe yeah. I would I would so irritate him in one direction, I could move him in another because he's resistant. He's one of these people who loves his dog more than life except until he has to do something. <sighs> then he doesn't love it so much. That's all. I was I was being facetious because he's so difficult. Well, we, we've all got those. <laughs> of course we do, but he happens to be my physician as well. Yeah. So <laughs> I <laughs> right. So I walk in with my list of complaints and he has his list of complaints in my office call for me about his boxer. That's how we interact. Perfect. So, so oh, does anybody course. have any other quick questions or cases that they want to run by Renee? Uh, Debbie can put my email in the chat too. If you guys get the no-knockling training socks or try them with a specific case, um, as Kate has found out with some other products, you can email me directly and I will help you guys uh, with protocols, um, you know, advancements and reps, whatever it is. Um, you know, I'm here to help you guys with this. I love to talk rehab as Deb knows, sometimes I don't shut up, <laughs> um, but I'm here for you guys to, uh, you know, shoot, uh, you know, some, bounce some things off of me, uh, with any patients that you have. Do you make house calls, Renee? No. <laughs> Orlando. Well, you know, 
Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Depends on where it's, you are. It's Depends pretty on... cold. I'm in, I'm in Maryland and it's been, you know, pretty cold here. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I, I will be heading to, to Orlando for vacation. Well, Florida for vacation later in the year, but yeah. Oh, I practiced in Rockville for years. Oh, did you? Yeah, years. I was at oh. um, Gaithersburg VCA veterinary referral with uh, Dr. Steve Steinberg was my mentor uh, coming into I, rehab. I go back to, I started out there in um, 80, 83, 83. And they have been there since then. They weren't VCA, but they have been there yeah. since then. Yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact, was it Sailor? Dr. Just, Dave, Dr. Dave Sailor, he I retired. Just, yeah. He's not retired though. <laughs> he's doing nasal and sinus surgeries. Yeah. And I just sent someone to him with a cat, an old yeah. friend, and he just did the surgery. Yeah. I can't even guess how long he's been doing this. He's a very been, long time. He's the nose right. guy. <laughs> this is how old we all are. That's my old stomping ground for years. <laughs> well, yeah, then that's, you know, yeah. where I am. Um, I do know where you are. Don't worry. I'm not showing up. I do. Know <laughs> um, Debbie, I think you have some, some exciting news to share with all of these wonderful fellow professionals for attending this evening. Don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> so for everyone that attends this webinar, we will be um, contacting you for a um, free no knuckle training sock for you to use. <laughs> so I did just get a, a message from Julia asking, um, do we go through the email for the size? So I have um, everyone that attended tonight. So I will be reaching out to you in the next couple days um, on whether you want a front or rear um, or what size you want. So um, look out for the email from me. We will also um, be sending everyone the recording as well. Um, so if you want to share this with other folks in your practice, um, other rehab friends that weren't able to join, um, please feel free to um, go ahead and share the knowledge. Um, and we'll also, um, when we send everything to you, um, we will also send the link to where all our videos can be found. Um, there's on our uh, pet professional website, there's um, all of our past um, Zoom sessions. Um, Renee speaks on some of them. I speak on some of them. Um, so um, there's a ton of knowledge there. So um, please feel free to, again, um, message Renee, message myself. Um, if you have those patients that you are looking for um, something specific for, um, or just, you know, need to wrap your head around something and bounce something off somebody else, um, we're always here and available for you. Yes, you. yes and spread the word. <laughs> spread the no knuckling training sack word. Go out and, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, the more, the more professionals we share this with, the more uh, animals it can help. And uh, we have a really great community. Um, you know, it's, it's great to be a part of this. And, you know, it's, it's a great to, to be a part of taking all the knowledge that I've learned from this community and working in it and continuing to design products uh, to help pets. I have a really couple new ones that are, are been working on um, that will be coming out through Walk and Pets. So I'm really excited when we get to those Zoom sessions about the new ones. Um, I think you guys are going to be happy. I can't say anything else. <laughs> so, uh, you know, keep you on the edge of your seat. Um, and that's my yellow lab Beasley saying goodnight. <laughs> He's barking now. He's like, great mom, dinner time. <laughs> So awesome. Well, great. Thank you, Renee, again, you. for, um, you know, helping us and guiding us and providing your knowledge um, for another great webinar. Um, thank you all for giving up some of your evening um, in the US. And for those of you in other countries, good morning. And thank you for um, spending part of your morning with us. Um, again, we will be following up in the next few days um, in regards to your free no knuckling training socks. Um, and also getting the recording. Um, our next uh, webinar is, um, are we May 19th, Renee? I, thought, I think May 21st was sticking in my head. It's mid-May. <laughs> I was gonna say, because we're typically on Wednesdays, so it, it mm -hmm. must be the 19th. 19th, there we go then. Yeah, okay. Um, so May 19th is our next session. We will be back at noon time for that session, um, and it will be um, in regards to the walk and wheels, um, how to correlate and 
um, the correct fittings, um, how to put into some rehab protocols and things like that. So um, again, it'll be um, Renee and I doing that presentation as well. Um, so stay tuned for that announcement and um, the link for registration. And just to add one thing, Debbie, if you guys have uh, things or topics that you want to hear us cover in regards to product use, um, whether it's rehabbing clinic, whatever it is, uh, feel free to email Debbie your thoughts, what you want to hear about, um, so we can continue to make sure that we are talking about things that you guys want to continue to learn about. Okay. All thank right. You, well, thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.